So we've been carrying on a little bit about the um, about the values in a picture, and uh, and so anonymous wants to know what the general tonality is that I refer to, and of course there's enough reference to it. You probably could sort it out if you just listen to all 150 videos. Uh, uh, that's a lot of listening, actually, if you consider how many hours that is. Um, what is the, but anyway, this question from Anonymous, what's the general tonality I refer to, and is there a general color as well? And, um, and you know, it brings up a lot of questions about the idea of generalizations. And uh, it's a funny thing because I do refer to knowing how to generalize, how to, in, in even laying in a painting impressionistically, you have to know how to say, to cover territory and not say nothing, and yet not get lost in those places with lots of drawing in them and that sort of thing. So the word generalities is a pretty good word. Um, so I just want to talk a, a, a little bit about the general substance of the uh, of the tonality issue. Tonality is just a word for values. So setting up the values in a picture requires establishing in your mind and canvas the darkest dark, the lightest light, and every one of the art students like actually would say things like that as, as much as I pick on some, some of that, those guys for not saying much. <laughs> it was always a question. Now, how much of that was really in the air? Because we really had such, such a small amount of very formal sitting down and instruction. If, if not even sitting down, how much hands-on on a regular basis besides, you know, once or twice a week for 10 minutes or less. But, uh, but that was still one of those things that everybody talked about. You have to do that. You have to know what your darkest dark and lightest light's going to be. <clears throat> And that um, whole thing is a function of your of the the range that you choose to work in, or that you must work in. And general tonality is the is the key to that. Okay, so uh, so some people, besides trying to get the darkest dark and lightest light, will talk about um, uh, searching out a major midtone, and uh, and or even anchoring to a major midtone and letting your dark so lights move in from there. Uh, all that sounds a little bit uh, arbitrary when you hear me say it, but there are enough factors that it's not really arbitrary. Uh, over time, you'll see that uh, these decisions are made for you. Nature itself, uh, if, if you're an impressionist, nature itself is saying that you to get this result, to get this quality of chroma, that quality of, uh, 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 of uh, color and s several things, you're going to need this kind of value range to work in. And, uh, of course, the discussion that uh, Max Melder brings to it is that there's, you know, there's some range between, say, 1 and 20, which is the maximum you can get in a studio. You can be, you can be up to white and you can be down to the black as black, but outdoors uh, and other times not so much. You have to live in a higher range, you know. So instead of from 1 to 20, it'd be from 5 to 20 or something like that. So, you know, that, that is uh, what people call keying a picture, and that's not something we're getting into today, but keying is a values thing as well, okay? Um, but I think a key to keying, though, is the word general tonality. So I'm just saying you have to establish the general tonality of the picture. Um, and it, it, most, most impressionists do it in the setting of spots. You set down a note here, set down a note there. We do it with color, but our biggest concern is to get the values right first even though the color is sitting there, and even though we're adjusting chromatically. And then there's the idea of what the dominant tone is in a picture. It's a, one of those useful things, again. But So what's the role of effects in relational play? Uh, that's, a, that's one that every one of these things is determined by that, right? So uh, as I've said, if you, if you want to paint the richness of a certain kind of purple flower that's really, really a blue-red, you can only get up so high that quinacrinones won't even do what nature will do. In, even indoors in multiple circumstances. So everything else has to find its way back down. This is just the chromal range, right? It's just the intensity range. But the rest of the, so what do you have to live with? You have to, set, you have to figure that one out and that will incorporate, that will include getting the values right as well as getting the intensity right on that key spot. And then the rest of them, again, that's the word for that. They get keyed to that, to, to that leader. Another word for that is anchoring. Uh, so let's just look at some pictures. I'm showing you here three uh, Joseph de Camps. Uh, the one in, in the top is a black and white. Um, and uh, for that, re I mean, just I'm using it because it actually shows values only. It doesn't show color. Each one of these pictures, the other two, all live in a values range. Uh, so don't think we're not doing values just because we're doing color. In fact, the first 
part of the triad that makes up the word color is value. What's the value of the note? What's the intensity of the note? And what is the hue of the note? That's the red, yellow, blueness of the note. Those are the things you're sorting through when you're trying to get an effect like, say, that one down below there where, where, um, where DeCamp is painting this, this very effectively um, articulated sunshine on the, trees, on, the, on the wall of trees and grass there. So, uh, but you can see that the bottom picture is the lightest general tonality. Now look easy at these, look soft or look, look rapidly or look at all three at once and you'll easily see that the bottom one is the lightest of these three. It's a light uh, middle tone. This one in the middle here is like a, it's like a true middle tone. By the way, think about this, say, when I talk about the general tonality, I'm talking about this general impression, this averaging out that sort of happens. Uh, if you blow your eyes down enough, but it's easy enough to see when you just look at this, this without looking into them. If you just look at these three pictures, this is a black picture. This is a dark middle tone picture. This is a light one. That is the general tonality of a picture. Okay. Um, now, one thing I suggest to people when you're going outdoors to paint, for example, is you look through your viewfinder or your hands, right? When you want to know what, 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 what the uh, value uh, or what the general tonality is of this spot, put your hand over here and look at that spot and see what the difference is between this and that. And look at that spot and look at this spot. Now, that doesn't give you everything uh, because, to, I mean, because these things overlap. You can paint some pictures that are impressionist pictures. Some people use more heavy-handed darks and uh, others who won't get near a dark. And they can get similar results because of the way they manage the range that they have chosen. So, uh, but nevertheless, it gives you some idea if you just look around at, at different things. It'll give you some idea if the, if, if the picture is warm or cool. If you look at a certain direction, you're going to see there's a... If you look in the mirror of your car when you're driving, out the front windshield, if it doesn't have a glaze on it, out the front windshield, is you'll be driving one direction, it's blue, maybe, and you look out your rearview mirror and it's orange, depending where the sun is in relation to your car. So uh, those are different uh, colors of the day of that through that viewfinder. One cool, one warm, one... one uh, one blue, one, one orange. But we're still talking general tonality. I want to talk about general tonality, but I really want, want to talk about general color and general chroma as well, okay? So these are white pictures. You could say that's the color of these pictures. <laughs> They're warm whites, a linen white pictures, uh, arguably, right? I, the, the one on the bottom right is uh, the Benson. is harder to say that's true of. But so many of you probably have seen the uh, Fumes de Ambergris. I believe that's up in Williamstown at the Clark Museum. So if you ever come to the New England area, be sure you go to the Williamstown Museum. It's really, it's really well worth the time of anybody who's in the representational art studies uh, world. But um, uh, the one on the left is, is Joseph de Camp. And you can see that if you look at these three again fast, you can see that the one on the left is the lightest, the one in the middle is the least light, and the one on the right is the darkest of these three as the general tonality goes. It doesn't necessarily mean that the lightest, that the, this, this picture could have the lightest lights in it. It could, let's say here, it might be lighter than anything in this picture, but the picture taken as a whole, its general tonality is a, is a middle tone, somewhat toward the light side. It's not toward the inky side. Um, uh, so, yeah, let's just leave it at that. I don't want to make a long thing out of a short one, but, but I did want to bring a different Benson into the picture. These are all full-color photographs, <laughs> representations of these paintings. So they, this really is that neutral virtually. It's, 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 it's virtually that neutral. Uh, and um, by the way, there's, in painting whites, there's a, um, I think it was Alfred Stebbins who said, you can tell a colorist if he can paint whites. He's, the guy's a colorist if he can paint whites. And uh, that's an interesting question. What does that mean, right? So, uh, but again, I'm showing you this light picture, then this value picture, and then what value is this picture? Because your first instinct is to say, well, screaming with light. But is this picture actually... Is it, is it actually darker than this one or lighter than this one? And so that's a fascinating question. But, but these two pictures appear to be virtually the same. This may be slightly more toward the light side. This one appears to be the lightest of the three if you look at it in terms of general tonality. But this is why uh, everything we do is all encompassing. When you start introducing chroma, you start talking about light again and the feeling of brightness and uh, sunshine, all those things that go with it, I can fake you right out. Warm colors make you feel like it's more lit. Just curious, odd stuff like that. And of course, that uh, Benson thing, that all comes from this, um, this guy, you know, our friend Monet. But here you're looking at, too, by the way, let's just talk about um, uh, 
uh, well, let's talk about the general tonality. You see this is a quite light picture compares with some of the previous white ones. And this is somewhere in a different range, just, just going up the scale just a little bit. It's not a dark picture. It's, it's not even a dark middle tone. It's a light, light middle tone. So uh, that's characteristic. But now notice the difference between these two pictures in color. This is a warm picture. That's a cool picture. Now that's a general statement about a painting. And you must be able to say that. That's, that's one of the grand unities that's involved in a picture. And uh, so this is a golden white. Uh, if you want to call it golden compared with this, this is warm, that's cool. This is golden, that's blue uh, toward, the cool so toward the red side of blue, right? Largely. As a general impression of the color. You want to th be able to think of that as one big note. So when you go flick, flick, flick by, don't look hard at these pictures. You can tell that's a blue and that's not a blue. This is a yellow. Okay. And then you have the intensity question, right? So the intensity question, this appears to have more intent color, intense colors. This one appears to have more light effect, but it appears to be more, by, more of a value caused one, which is a tonalist thing, right? So, but, uh, but, so that's another one of those things, the chroma chromaticity of a picture, which we'll get to in two in a minute. Now, speaking of tonalists, uh, for the sake of my producer, I, I brought in uh, George Innes, uh, always been a favorite of mine as well. He's got this wonderful mood hanging all over everything he does. And uh, he's a guy who, by the way, would lay a picture in outdoors eventually in his career, and then he would apparently, according to his son, would then paint from memory all over it and change whatever and, and, and invent a picture, invent, invent us, you know, a, a, a pictorial delight, right? It's interesting because um, you would argue that um, uh, the, the imaginative work of Degas, which he pieces together from players, you know, horsemen and, or, or, or distant hills and things like that, he pieces it all together. He doesn't paint it on the spot outdoors as, as Innes seems to be doing, but both of them ultimately get to the place where they're really inventing a picture, even though he starts somewhere else. That's very different, by the way, from being an Impressionism. A different, a, that part of it, that much of it is different. Uh, but now again, look at these as, as general values. This is the darkest of the three pictures, an evening picture. This one appears to be, and if you take in everything, right? Uh, and think of this again as if it were a checkerboard and if you had dark and light, not, not bright white and, black, and dark black checkers, but if you had a, a middle dark and a middle a light uh, middle tone, squares on a checkerboard, you know, one over the other, you'd be able to, to look at that thing, blur your eyes and, and generalize its value. And that's rather, that's rather what you're doing right here when you look at these pictures. Keep remembering when I'm saying this, that I, there's a need to understand the general tonality of your picture, the general value of your picture, so you can live there, so you don't start wandering all over the joint <laughs> arbitrarily by doing parts and pieces. And um, this is the kind of stuff I'm trying to get people to do in the composition, uh, in their composition training as well. Um, yeah, so you see the orange picture and the clear blue picture, clearly a blue picture. It's a different color picture, but you'd, you'd argue this is the same thing when you talk about color. This is basically a blue picture with orange and greens in it. But that's, that's harder to sell when it looks like a blue and green and orange, whatever, when it looks like a three-color picture. It's a lot easier to see both of this one as orange and this one as, as, as a blue to green with just variations within that note. Um, all right. So I think I did. I covered the general uh, intensity of these pictures. This one, this one appears to be intense. That's fairly intense. This is considerably less intense, the general intensity of the picture. And uh, here's uh, uh, Degas and uh, Chardin. I, I probably should have put this up there so that you'd catch on quickly to the fact that Chardin some days just looks like a tonalist. Uh, he's, at, he's significantly ahead of his times in a number of ways, but he's, he's so like uh, Velasquez, isn't it? By the time he gets to the end of his life in any number of his pictures where he's clearly painting with his brush and painting with marks rather than drawing outlines. Of course, Ang wouldn't, wouldn't be caught dead doing anything but drawing outlines. <laughs> Lots of lines, as many as you can find from memory and from, what do you say, from nature. But, uh, but this is a dark middle tone picture, right? Now, just because a light is featured in it, that's actually characteristic of a dark picture. Dark pictures get, by their definition of the, by the generalities of the value, of the dark value, the lights get to be featured. So these lights get featured, right? And um, if you have a movement like a picture that's of general tonality is, is, is maybe dark, but it's actually got a movement of value in it going from darker to lighter, then you can actually make weaker lights in the dark area look as strong as strong lights in the weak area. Although saying yeah, this one doesn't do that, but uh, but it's still that's the kind of thing you're capable of doing. Um, uh, I should say this doesn't do it. Maybe this area would do it. This would be a similar 
uh, contrast, a, a type of contrast uh, level. Um, yeah, that's that's one of those things Max Meldrum refers to as, uh, what does he call it? Some kind of speed um, extension or something or other, a, a funny word, but how dramatically it gets to your eye. And uh, so we're talking huge contrast here and relatively some here and way less here. This idea I just refer to as contrast, and I talk about the visual order, which is the order of the leading facts, one in relation to the other, which, which effect is the strongest and therefore gets to your eyes soonest. Now, that's a different story. Why am I talking about that? But it just values, it values leads you to all sorts of interesting things. Um, so, yeah, if you can ignore just the fact that there's a dark in here and a lighter note or something or other, and you don't have to pick a value, but it probably is the value of this picture in general is probably about like that, if you just were, could just sum it up. If you blur the heck out of your eyes and all these things would sort of come together. You'll find this idea valuable when you're painting from life uh, in a different way that I just can't explain now. So here's a Bob Hunter and a gamble on the right and then a uh, photograph from, uh, from my producer's film. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Cin Cinematsky Amerikansky, Journey to the American Cinema, which I hope he will actually write the name up there so you can follow a little bit of his career <laughs> that isn't just doing... Uh, nice things for me, uh, and um, as a filmmaker, and um, the um, but the but the um, the reason I show you these partially is because there are three types of green pictures. So I've talked about the general tonality, the general color of these pictures. They're each green. This is a rel relatively speaking a dead green. This is a also a dead green that goes toward the blue side, and this is actually the uh, richest of the three per green, and. Um, so it's, it's, it's the most chromatic, has the most chromaticity in general. This has the most chroma. And between these two here, of course, this one is a more chromatic picture when you just take it as a whole than this one or this one. Uh, I may have misspoke about this. I've forgotten exactly what I said. So, uh, But nevertheless, uh, the general tonality of these three pictures is different in each one, right? You see, this is probably the lighter one. This one would be next lightest. These All these darks, if you think of that as a part of the general impact thing, they do weigh heavily on this value. And this is just like the Ang there. It's just a dark to middle tone dark picture. And um, um, which is what again features the lights and makes them makes it possible to do light games, um, have some light play. Um, but this is a case where I'm trying to suggest you go outside with this one uh, from from uh, the film, where you go outside. I think this is the, this is the uh, this is the filmmaker himself. Um, but uh, but this one here, the kind of thing you need to do, looking through your hands, you know, as I say again, looking through that, you can look around and you can actually say, is it a cool picture or a warm picture? It's decidedly different from this one. This is a way warmer picture than this one, right? And, but you can say all those things and you need to rather say them. Get your head around the big ideas of these pictures before you go anywhere. General tonality is just one of them, right? So here's Degas, and this one kind of is here because I want to talk about the chromaticity, and he really pushes the envelope, doesn't he? But here he's got three different levels of chroma. This is probably probably the most intense in general as a general covering, and that really is because a lot of this picture is neutral. But um, yeah, you can argue about it. I I rather say that this is by far the most. I think it's by far the most chromatic. This is next, and this one isn't as chromatic. Uh, you can see this is the warmest in general, so it's a warm picture. Relatively speaking, this is a cool picture. Remember, these things are relative. I mean, even the red, yellow, blueness, when I say it, who wants to call that a yellow picture? You could call it a green picture, whatever you, whatever you think of as a word, you know, but you can just look at it, and it's, so say mustard when you think of that one, but it's, or, but if you're looking at these two together, you'd say warm, and you'd say yellow. If you're looking at these two at once, you'd say cool. And you might, and you might refer to this one as a, as a, um, uh, a red picture with blues splattering through it as we talk about it. Um, this one here tends definitely to be rather in the family of red, but it's a dark tonality. The general tonality is dark. Okay. Okay, I think I have one more set of slides. No, I don't. That's it. Okay. So let's just review uh, what I've said, and then we can... Uh, and I don't think there's anything else that you need to actually hear. Computer's behaving slow today. We have a nice warm New England day, which I'm hoping I'm not too too sweaty to be presentable here today. <laughs> um, but so the question is about the general tonality and, and that whole thing is what are we trying to do, right? So you're trying to understand what's, what you're seeing in front of you. You want to you know what the value range is going to be. So these are the things to consider. You have to consider 
Well, I didn't mention the word light effects in here, but the darkest dark and light of lights, which I actually involve myself uh, with ascertaining the light effects. I want to know what I can do, what, what, what dark meeting light with a sharp edge will do here to get me a light effect. I want to test those things as well. I'm trying to see what range I have to live in to get all these things. And I think that differentiates, uh, um, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Mel, Max Meldrum from the Boston School by a lot. I think they actually, when, when Gamble says of them the subject is light, you wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that of Max Meldrum. For Max Meldrum, the subject is value relationships. But, um, but and, 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 and really taking that whole panoply of stuff that happens in pictures and really objectifying it uh, and, and, and not act, well, not in every case at least, trying to act, actually ask that next question, which is what does it do in the framework of the rest of the picture? And um, so, as I said, I'm only halfway through that book. Maybe I didn't say it to you guys. Somebody got me a copy of Max Meldrum's Science of Appearances. So that's why I'm talking about him today. I will bring t bring it to you. I'll make the comparisons. I'll bring his basic items to you if you like, and uh, go ahead and get a um, uh, uh, express a comparison between uh, between us. But it's, so you're, everything is about anchoring. But you have to understand your big general tonality. Is your picture going to be a dark middle tone or light picture? But it's, it's determined frequently. I mean, entirely by what range you must live in to achieve your chroma chromatic qualities, your light effect qualities, and, um, and your general tonality. So I think that's the biggest, most significant thing about it. And um, the only other thing I would say is just make sure you expect play. When you start seeing these sorts of things talking to each other, the whole idea of general, general tonality, you still have to have all the values and nothing in the right place. There's no, there's no big fat smudge that even begins the game. It's all made out of all sorts of different things. But you've got to be able to get that general look to be right to nature, the general range of values to be right, to be the most effective you can to, to reproduce what nature does as best we can with the yolk of an egg. So, okay, all right. That's, that was intended to be a short uh, little, little, little bite, um, but I wanted to follow up just a little bit on the values one. So, all right. Well, thank you all for your uh, subscribing, sharing, and all the rest. Uh, I was supposed to let you know um, that, uh, and your comments especially, but uh, that we are planning a, um, uh, a live event where you can actually send uh, uh, emails to us and we can talk about your answer things online. Um, I'm sorry, in a live event, we can answer what you're sending online and I can do it, well, maybe do some demonstrating uh, uh, in answer to what you're asking. So you might wanna have that in mind um, and, um, I was, you know, I was sort of feeling like promising that when we got to about a thousand subscribers, it seemed like we'd never get there. But now we're sort of thinking about what would be a good time. It won't be for a couple months still, but um, but you might be thinking about that and uh, be be um, be aware that we're going to create a time, either an hour or two hours, where people can can uh, be there with us and uh, vicariously, or at least if that whatever you think the email is, is that vicarious? Anyway, get in your uh, get in your questions directly to me, uh, even if it's through the vicarious means of an email. All right. Um, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Okay.